Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Tournament Tuesday. So every Tuesday we're going to get together now for the next few weeks and have a look at the events going on around the world about four weeks in advance. So we used to cover some of this in the monthly meta, but we decided that it needed to come out, but you guys wanted it back. So what we're going to try now is uh, for the next few weeks, having a look about a month in advance to see what events are coming up. So I want you to let me know if you like the format, whether you want it further in the future, whether you want more in less episodes, whatever. Just tell me what you want because I love looking ahead at these events and I was really pleased to see that you guys missed it. So that's pretty cool. So today we're going to look at Saturday and Sunday, the 18th and 19th of September. That gives us just over a month. So if you're thinking, I'm not working that weekend, I'm free you might be able to go to an event. So let's have a look at Blood Bowl events around the world. So nothing going on in the UK that weekend. Genuinely, which is quite interesting. Nothing from a NAF point of view. Anyway, um, if you are in the UK and you do have some things going on, please pop them in the comments. And if you're looking for something to do, check the comments. Otherwise, get painting. I know you've got teams. I know you've not painted them. Have a go. Just have a go. Weekend off. Anyway, in Europe, we do have some events coming up. And you have to forgive me for getting these names wrong because I am incredibly British when it comes to this. So we got some things in Europe. Uh, so two days, uh, 18th and 19th in Monto, France. Bowl Divines, 11. And in Moreau, France, again, Saturday and Sunday, the Comtois Bowl, 7 as well. Uh, in Viborg, Denmark, on the Saturday, there's the Mitcon GT 2021. And Saturday the 18th in Langerano, Italy, you've got the Postal Salumi Gathering. So all of this is 11 events. You've got two two days in France, two one days in Denmark and Italy. And in the USA, we've got two events. So there's McMurty's Open, which is in Virginia, USA, on Saturday the 18th. An 11s event again and the dutch kills cup 5 in brooklyn usa on the sunday so first up let's have a look at our european tournament so bowl divines 11 which is a two-day event the rules pack don't actually say how many rounds but it's a two-day so you're probably thinking five or six there it's an 11s event so build rules there are five tiers the team cost is 1100 across the board though so it doesn't really matter Skills packages are in addition to the team value. So uh, tier one, get five regular skills. Uh, sorry, primary. Let's get it right. Tier two, get six primary. Tier three, get seven primary. Uh, tier four, get seven primary and one double, one secondary. That's it. And uh, tier five, which is your stunty tier, get seven primary and two secondary skills. Uh, there is skill stacking. So naught to two per player max and one once per team, you can swap two primaries for a double. So if you're looking at bringing a stunty team, so tier five in this event, uh, you could swap two of your primaries to end up with five primary and three secondary skills. So something like ogres where you want to get extra block, that'll be the way to go with that. This, however, is very interesting for the format. You can take star players, but Hackflem, Morg and Griff are all banned. Now, I wasn't aware that you could do this when it came to getting NAF sanctioning and just sort of spot picking what you can and can't take. I do, however, quite like this for the format. You guys will know we've been looking at tournament coverage and Hackflem, Morg and Griff are some of the biggest and most impactful players out there. In fact, Hackflem and Morg on a Chaos Dwarf team going to win a lot of events with that build so really interesting to see that those guys are just straight up banned i'm excited to see how this one plays out and the comptoir bowl is saturday and sunday again in monto france two day five rounds this time now this is a team event i love team events i think they are so cool a lot of work to put together but there's just not there's, it's just awesome. Anyway, uh, teams of four, uh, four tiers in this one. So uh, it's 1.15, so 1,150,000 gold, with the exception of tier four, which again are your stunties. They get an extra 50k, so they get 1,200. Skills-wise, this one is SPP buy. So you spend six skills for a primary, that kind of thing. Um, 30 SPP for tier one, so basically five primary skills. Uh, tier two and tier three both get 36 SPP. And tier 4 gets 42 SPP on that, which is quite a lot of skills. It gives you quite a lot of flexibility. So there's no stacking except one player per roster can stack two random skills. Uh, random skills are rolled before every single game as well, which is quite cool. So if you're looking at stacking up some random generals on your goblins, um, sometimes you'll get block. Sometimes you won't. In fact, sometimes you'll get tackle. So stars are allowed for tier 4 only, as is a giant 
So this is probably one of the first events where we've seen that giants are allowed, with the exception of Titan Ball, which I'm not entirely sure was this rule pack or whether it was the old rule pack. Anyway, you can take a giant if you're tier four, which obviously I'm a huge fan of. Now, the way they're putting these teams together is that each team, each tier, um, costs a certain manner of roster points. So uh, tier four is one roster point. Tier three, I think, is two. Tier one is four. Um, so each of your teams, you know, you kind of build a roster point thing between your group of players. Um, if you have spare roster points left over, you get in-game benefits. So uh, things, I can't remember, I think it was like a, a keg or something. It's a clever way to put it together. If I was running a team event, I'd have teams of three, probably one tier one, one tier two, one tier three or maybe two tier twos, I'm not sure. It gives you the opportunity to then be like, right, who's your tier three player? Oh, it's that guy, that's cool, he's great with Stunty. I like that, I think that's pretty cool. You can't be a four man team event. Um, we had Fubble Wobble Cup a couple of years ago and it was just potentially one of the best Blood Bowl days I've ever had. Anyway, this is a very cool event, I'm glad to see it. And again, I will be very eagerly awaiting those results. Next up, we've got uh, Mitcon GT in Denmark. So this one uses the ATV rules. I should probably do a video just on the ATV rules themselves. I'm not going to go through it in this format. Basically, it's all teams viable. Uh, they break it down into about 75 different tiers and have a clever but quite confusing system of gold bars where you can have extra TV or extra skills. It's cool, it's in-depth, and I love the way it spreads out things across the teams to try and get that equitable balance. Really interesting. I do recommend you go have a read on it, and we should probably do a video about it. Not going to go into it today, but... That's what this one is. One day, four rounds, 11s, ATV. So the last European one to look at is the Postal Salumi Gathering, Saturday the 18th in Langerano, Italy. Sorry if I got that wrong. It's a one day, not sure how many rounds, isn't detailed, probably three or four. It's 11s event as well. So kind of couple cool twists for this one. It's a three tier roster, but because Ogres won it before, they've boosted them up to tier one. Vampires have been downgraded to tier 4, which is interesting because vampires are actually sneaky very good. Uh, 1.15 at tier 1, 1 1.2 at tier 2, and 12.50 at tier 3. Tier 3, vampires tier 4, vampires are tier 3. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. Vampires are tier 3. So skills-wise, it's SPP by 30 for tier 1, 42 for tier 2, and 54 for tier 3. So vampires here get 12.50 and 54 SPP. Now it's not to two skill stacking, I believe. So you are gonna see a incredibly potent vampire build here. Four, five vampires, probably four vampires. Stars, there's no Highlander rule in place, so I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see a five vampire build, each of them with pro and block or something. That's gonna be a very powerful roster at that point. Um, I do like the fact that tier sorry the tier three teams get a ton of stuff there 1250s are loaded things you've got star players this is kind of what we're seeing uh, a lot of the moment where you've got no limit to those stars which means you're going to end up with those stars doing some pretty great stuff but my build for this one would definitely be looking for taking vampires there because that is so much money and so much skills really cool now we look at the two US ones. We've got McMurty's Open, which is happening on Saturday the 18th in Midlothian, Virginia, USA. It's one day, three rounds, and another 11s event. Uh, there are four tiers to this one. It's 1.15 for everybody, though. So that is all the way balanced round. And it is skills. Pretty simple skill allocation, like we saw. Weaver Twist. So the idea here is that McMurty's are the definitely not McDonald's of the Blood Bowl world. Um, everybody has free burgers, which means there is a weird side effect, which is that players can only take duplicate skills. So tier 1 gets 4 duplicates, tier 2 gets 5 duplicates, one of which can be primary, tier 3 gets 6 duplicates, 2 of which we can, which can be primary, and um, uh, tier 4 gets 7 skills, and 2 of them can be primary skills, which is important for those big guys. So 0-2 players stacking, second secondary skills only and 0 to 2 of each skill maximum so this is going to stop you from having absolute guard spam in those teams that can take it but it is going to mean you end up with some quite creative teams so a lot of dwarves with dodge perhaps and a lot of dark elves with guard um, so going to create some interesting rosters stars wise stars are good to go you got to have 11 players as the rules say but duplicate stars are at minus one av so not quite a ha highlander but kind of similar to that um so there are four tiers and tier four are all your stunties uh tier one are your tier one teams but skaven have been bumped down to tier two as have owa interesting one poor skaven getting underrated i reckon here still cool build great theme 
interested to see how that plays out. And the last one we got for you is the Dutch Kills Cup 5 in Brooklyn, New York, USA on Sunday the 19th. Another one-day, three-round 11s event. Build rules, three tiers, 1.15 for tier 1, 1,200 for tier 2, and 12.50 for tier 3. Tier 3 is your stunty uh, zone here. This is a pretty ordinary build. I like this one. It's a very standard format. Uh, Skills-wise, you've got skill purchase. So across all these events, we've seen you've got SPP buy, you've got allocation, and you've got purchase here. So tier 1 and tier 2 at 1,211.50 and you're going to be able to buy some skills regular skills for uh regular star player rules are in effect and no stacking is available so tier two you're looking at probably some pretty decent um underworld builds there's nothing squiffy with the tiers here so the teams are going to be legitimate now no stacking is going to hurt those teams that are cheaper um so look to see star players in an event like this but i do think something like dwarves something like amazon are going to do really well dwarves and chaos dwarves at the moment are absolutely running rife and the reason for that is because they don't need a lot of skills that tackle just turns off some of the most scary things in this game right now which are your hack flems your griffs your elves those teams underworld and stunty tackle just absolutely undoes them so chaos dwarves dwarves are going to do well normally you'd look at something like amazons and go oh i can take blodge guard spam you can still do that but i would be expecting to see some short people ruining your fun um tier three at 1250 is pretty good there's a lot of skills you can take a lot of doubles so ogres are probably going to be okay in this one because you can spend a ton of cash giving them all block and just having a really great time and fitting a, a star player in there with that money i like it skill purchase makes those team those those packages smaller than they are so realistically it's about 1 million 50 for tier 1 because you want to spend at least 100k on skills at this point 1.1 for tier 2 you can get hack flame in an underworld build and have 100k's worth of skills that's probably a pretty good place to be in this one i like it i do think you're going to see some halflings with griff though because why would you not Okay, guys, so those are the tournaments that are coming up in four and a half weeks' time, Saturday and Sunday, 18th of 19th of September. Now, we're going to do this for the next few weeks and just have a look at that. So do let me know in the comments if you like it, if you like the format, what you want us to change, whether you want us to go longer, whether you want us to drop this every fortnight, every month, whatever. Let me know because I love seeing what's coming up and I love that you guys do too. That is worth doing for me and uh, I'm a big fan. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. Thank you ever so much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.